In today's video on advanced web design with WordPress, we're going to delve into Jet Engine and specifically into the relationships. We're going to see how they work, how to set our first relationship up, and how we can start creating much more complicated websites visually and considerably easier. When it comes to building relationships, they're not easy, and they're not easy when it comes to working with web design either. However, using Jet Engine, we can simplify the process of creating more complex websites very quickly and very easily. And in this video, we're going to take a simple example of an architect website where we're going to go through, we're going to set up an architect as a post type, we're going to set up projects as a post type, we're going to link those together so when you click on a particular architect, you can see the projects they've worked on, and if you click on a project, you can find out which architect or architects actually work worked on that. So if this is something that's you, then I hope this is going to take you through and get you up to speed very quickly. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so you're going to need a couple of things before we start. You're going to need Jet Engine, you're going to need Elementor Pro, and that's pretty much all we need. We've got everything we should need to do inside those two tools. Now I've already gone ahead and set up a basic site. So I'm going to jump into the dashboard. I'm going to take you through how we do all the things we need to cover to start building this out. So let's just jump over into our dashboard. Now, the first thing we need to do are create the post types that we want to work with. So we need to create one for the architect and one for the projects. To do that, we come over to the left hand side in our dashboard down to jet engine. We're going to choose the post types option. Once we're in there, we can now create our custom post types. Now you can see I've already created one for a different part of this particular website. So we're going to start from scratch by clicking on add new. Once we've done that, that's going to open up all the options we have available. Now don't feel put off by this. It's not as complex as it looks. And to be honest, there's a lot of options in there. You can just leave at their default. First thing we're going to do is give it a name. In this example, we're going to call it architect. Next up, we're going to create the slug. Now, don't worry about the slug. It's basically just the actual URL slug that's going to be used for your custom post type. So keep it pretty much the same if you can to what the actual name is. So we're just going to call this architect. Keep it all in lowercase. If you need to use more than one word, I'd always recommend sticking to use the underscore. So you can see we could say architect type, for example, using the underscore in between. I only need to use the word architect. Once we've done that, we have the labels option. And if we want to, we can edit those. And these are just effectively what you see if you look on the left hand side. So when we come down to property, for example, which is a custom post type I've created, you can see we've got things like property, add new, property type, property location, and so on. You can use these to control the actual text that's in there. So if you are dealing with a multilingual site, you may want to put different values in there. Or if you are dealing with a more complex thing, you may want to put values that make a little bit more sense to the end user if the default ones don't actually work that way. So you can see you've got a ton of options in there. I'm going to leave all of those as they are and just close that down. Next up, we've got the settings section. I'm going to leave all those checked as they are. The only thing I want to change is come down to hierarchical. I want to make sure that we can actually create a hierarchy should we need to further down the line by applying taxonomies and so on. And what do I mean by that? All it really means is if you are used to working with WordPress, when you create a post, you can assign categories to that post. Those categories are basically taxonomies, ways of grouping your posts together. So when you create a custom post type, you could do the same kind of thing. You have some other things on here you can take a look at. So you see we've got capability type post. We're going to leave it like that because we want this to act as a post, not a page or something along those lines. Next up, we're going to come down. We've got menu position. I'll leave that as default, but if you want to, you can put a numerical value in there to specify where inside your menu structure on the left hand side you want this to be positioned. Next up, we have a menu icon. So if we want, we can click on there and I'm just going to choose this option for an admin user kind of symbol just to signify that it's a user type that we're dealing with. Then finally, we have the supports. You can see by default, we've got title and editor and all these are, are the default sections inside a typical post type. So the title of your post, the editor, where you put your physical content. So if we want to add in something else from the default values, we can come in and we can choose from there. So I'm going to come in and say I want to use the thumbnail featured image. So now we have, by default, three entries in our custom post type, the title, the editor to put our content, and the thumbnail for the featured image. Now we can go through and add in additional meta fields. Now meta fields are basically custom fields that you want to add in there that are relevant to your custom post type. So because this is our architect and we want to put some additional information in that relates specifically to that person, let's add a couple of extra custom fields in. Let's start off by saying we want to put in telephone. 
So the next thing we need to do is put the name and the ID in there. Now, before we move on and just put something in there, I want to specify something that I think is worth getting into the habit of doing just to make your life easier. I use a naming convention, which is basically splitting things into two. We're going to say what custom post type this is, architect. Then we're going to put an underscore and what the custom meta field relates to. In this example, telephone. So what I'm going to put is architect underscore telephone. Now, the reason I use this is because then when I need to call these up later on, and you'll see what I mean a little later when we start to utilize these IDs, it makes your life so much easier when you get into the habit of naming things in a common convention that you become very used to. You don't have to follow mine. You can use anything you want. But if you stick to that convention, it makes things easier than having to constantly jump back and forth, back and forth to try to remember what the custom field or the meta field's ID is to be able to use it later on down the line. So just a good thing to get into the habit of. Next up, we can choose the type of information this field is. Now, because it's a telephone number, we can set this to text because currently there's no numeric option in there, which hopefully this is something we'll see in the future. So we'll leave that as text. That's our first meta field. To add a second one, we just click on add new meta field and we can start putting in the details. So I'm going to create a second field now, which is for the architect's email. Again, you can see I'm sticking to the name and convention that I'm used to, which is the architect underscore email. Text is fine for this. We've pretty much created the meta fields we want. If we scroll down, we've got admin columns as another option. Now, the admin columns can come in very useful because what they allow us to do is create custom admin columns where you list all of your, in this example, architects. We can have additional columns in there. So you may have things like phone numbers, their full name, or whatever you kind of want to put in there, any of the custom fields. You can reference that inside the admin columns. For now, we're going to leave that as is, but it is something worthwhile knowing that it's there if you need it. So, okay, we've created everything, set all the things we want up on here, created our custom post type and added in some custom meta fields. Let's add our post type. And once that's done, you can see now we have a new entry on the left hand side called architect and we go into architect. This will show us our listing. As you can see, we literally have just the title and the date. But if we created those custom fields, we would have been able to see those in this particular listing. Coming to add new and you can see there's our page title. There's our actual content entry. There's our featured image, those key three things we had at the beginning. And if we scroll down, you can see we now have our two custom meta fields, one for telephone, one for email. So we've got all the basic information we need now to be able to create our new architect. So the next thing we need to do is create our next custom post type, which is going to be to actually create the project information. So what we need to do is come back to Jet Engine, back into post types, and we're going to create a second custom post type. So add new. And I'm just going to quickly run through and do exactly the same as I did, create the custom fields, assign all the things that I want to it using pretty much exactly the same techniques I've just covered just for speed in this video. So before I create that post type, let's just run through and see what I've done. So you can see I've called it an architectural project. We've got the slug set to project. I've left all the labels as they are. If we come down, you can see everything is set up pretty much exactly the same as it was the last time. And if we scroll down, I've created three custom fields. We've got a project location, which we're going to use to create a map. We've got a project completion, which is a date field that we can use to say when this project was actually completed. And if we wanted to assign some kind of searching and so on and filtering and things, you can see I've checked the option because this is a date related field type we can specify that we want to use this to save a timestamp and we can then use that to sort and query posts later on should we need to and then finally I've created a project gallery which is going to allow us to put some additional pictures of this particular project into a gallery and use that on the design as well so there's everything that I wanted in place we're going to come back up now we're going to hit add post type and we've created the post type for our projects and for our architects so the next thing we need to do now is go through and create the listings, which will actually output the information in those different types of post types. OK, so to access the listings and start creating those again, we come to the jet engine section on the left hand side. This time we choose listings. Once we've done that, we can start to create our listing. Now, if you're not sure what a listing is, it's basically we create the template for one particular item, whether that's going to be in this example, an architect or an actual project. So just consider the fact when you look at a typical WordPress blog page or a typical WooCommerce page, things are broken down into exactly the same boxes with different pictures, different information, but the box layout is exactly the same. That's the WordPress loop. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to create an instance of one of those items inside the loop. Then we're going to use that with the loop 
uh, widget for uh, Elementor. And then we're going to use that to create the actual loop itself. So this might sound a bit confusing, but once you see it in action, and I've already created a video on this, which I'll link in the description below. So I'd recommend checking that out if you want some more details on how this works, because I'm going to go through it quite quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is we say add new post. We're going to come down and we want this to be architect. And we're going to do is we're going to call this architect list thing. Let's just spell that correctly. There we go. Architect listing. Again, it's good to get into the naming convention so you know exactly what each of these different things relates to. Anything to do with the listing, I will always put listing at the end of it. And prior to that, I'll put exactly what the listing relates to. Just makes my life easier. Create our listing item. That will then open up Elementor and allow us to start creating the various different pieces that we need to flesh out that one instance of our loop. So let's just close all these down a second because we're going to use some of the tools that we have available as part of the listings element inside Jet Engine. You can see we have seven different options. The seventh, the listing grid, is something we don't necessarily want to use in this particular example. We're going to use that later. What we're going to do is we're going to say, first of all, we want to pull in a dynamic image. Now we're not going to see anything on here because obviously at the moment we have no information inserted into our architect or their projects. So we're going to be basically dealing with placeholders. So don't worry too much about that. If you want to make your life easier, you can go in and add some content in so you'll see exactly what you're working with at this point. But like I say, it's purely optional. So what we're going to do is you can see we've got the source is post thumbnail. That's perfectly fine. We'll leave that as is. We'll put that into the center. Now we can come back and style this a later, little later on. So don't worry too much. We're just creating the basics and we will come back and style things as we set everything up. Link the image. Yes, we want to do that. So people are used to kind of click on the image to go in and view more information that we want to do that. So we just click the use linked image. Leave the permalink. That's everything is fine on there. We don't want to open in a new window. We can leave that as is. So there's the image we want to put in. Next up, we're going to come back out and we're going to say we want to put in some dynamic field information. So we're going to drag that up there. You can see now we've got the source and the object field. Now, the two options inside the source, you can see we've got post term data and we've got metadata. Now, the difference between the two of these is post term data is basically anything that's part of a normal post. So the title, the sort of thumbnail image and things like that, they are post term data. The metadata are the custom meta fields we created. So, for example, you've got the architect's telephone number and so on. They are meta fields. And this is where that naming convention comes in handy. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So post term is fine. Title is fine. We'll leave that as is because that's going to be the title of this particular architect, his name, for example. So we've got the picture. And we've got the name of the person on there. We've got things like hide value if empty. Well, obviously, we're not going to have an empty name. But if you do have fields that are optional information, you can simply use the hide if value is empty option. And that gives you a nice level of control of showing and hiding only based upon if information is included. So that's pretty cool. So next up, we want to put some information in that are in our custom meta fields. So what we need to do now is the same thing again. Come back out, new dynamic field, drag and drop that up. This time, I'm going to change that to meta field. Now, you can see we have no options to choose. We literally have an empty field to put in that meta field key. This is why I said it's always very useful to make sure that you use that naming convention. Because what I can do now is I can say I know that this is architect underscore telephone. And providing I spell that correctly, that will put that information in there. We can say select an icon if we want to use one. So we're going to come down to there and we're going to say phone. So we're going to use the phone icon. And again, we'll say hide if this value is empty. So if we don't put a phone number in there, it will only show an empty space if we don't do this. Otherwise, doing this, we'll just remove that entry field from our sort of like our, our layout. And finally, we're going to come down and we're going to do the same thing again. Dynamic field. Click. And we're going to do the same thing. So metadata, and we're going to come in and we're going to do architect underscore email. We'll assign an icon to this. So we'll just use the envelope to signify an email. So we'll go envelope. That's fine. And we'll just add that there. And we'll say hide if value is empty. And now that we've done that. We've created our first listing. So we'll click on publish on there. And that will create the listing that we're going to use. So we need to do the same thing now again for the actual projects. But before I do, I'm going to go and put some basic information into a couple of projects and into architects, just so you can see how the difference is when you actually work with data in there and how we can control what data is actually being viewed when we're creating these templates inside the listing option. 
Okay, so let's create the listing now for our actual project, our architectural project. So same again, add new, posts. This time we're going to choose architectural project and we're going to say architecture project listing. Again, using that naming convention so it makes sense as you move forward. Create our listing item and that'll take us again back into Elemental. But what we should see now is when we start wanting to pull the data in, we can now control some basic information that's going to be displayed so we can see what we're building. So let's just say we're going to start off with the dynamic image again. So we're going to drag and drop that up onto the actual field. Now you can see we've got some information being displayed. Now we can manage this information. It'll By default, it'll pull in what it thinks is the right info but it might not always be the case. If you want to change that, you can just come down to the cog in the bottom left-hand corner of Elemental, click on your settings there, and you can see we have listing settings. Click on that, and that'll allow you to go through and choose what's your listing source. As you can see, we've got posts at the moment, which isn't necessarily what we want. You might have terms. Post is fine, and then it says from post type. So you can click and you can see we can pull in any of the post types, including our custom post types, all directly into this and we can control exactly what we're seeing so architectural projects is fine and it's a post type so that's all good so everything is fine on there so let's come back out I'm going to click back on this particular item you can see the source is the post thumbnail and that's perfectly fine because it's a dynamic image however if we had different images in there we could easily if we wanted to pull in a custom field just by using that custom field id like we saw in the last example Let's put this to be centered. We're going to say linked image because we want that permalink on there and everything else is looking good. We'll keep with that. So we'll jump back out. We're going to come down now and say we want dynamic field. Drop that in there. So you can see we've got post term and metadata again. Title is exactly what we want. We want the name of this particular architectural project. So that's all fine. You can come back up. Same thing again. We come back in and choose dynamic field again. Click on there. And what we can do now is we can pull any of the dynamic data that we want in. So for this example, let's just keep this really, really simple. Let's come in and choose metadata, and we're going to call this project location, because this is going to be allowing us to say exactly where this project is located. So you can see project location, that now pulls in the metadata. If we want to, again, we can control this and say exactly how it's going to be filtered if we want to, or how it's going to be displayed if there's no entry there whatsoever. Final thing we're going to do is we're going to come back in and do one more. So we're going to say dynamic field again. Come into this and we're going to come down metadata. We're going to create another one now, which is going to be the project completion date. So for this example, that's project underscore completion. You'll see that will pull in just a string of numbers, which means nothing, even though we put a date in there. So how do we get around that? Very easy. Come to the filter field output. Click to turn that on. Then we can choose from the drop down list of all the different types of ways we can filter this data. So we can say that we know this is a date, so we can say format date, and you can see that now puts that in there, specifying the date format that we wanted. You can adjust that if you want. If the format isn't the way that you want it, you can tweak that to get exactly what you want. But hopefully, what you can see is it's very easy to put this information in. So now we've done that, we've got the basic information for our actual listing for both our architect and our architectural projects. So now we need to go through and create that relationship so we can start to link those two together. But before we do, let's just click on publish to make sure this is all saved and then we can take a look at how we create those relationships. Now to access the relationships when you're working with Jet Engine, you come into the admin again of your site, come down to Jet Engines and we're going to choose post relations. You know, click on that, and as you can see, I've already created one. Let's go through and create the new one now for our architect and projects. Click on Add New. That's going to take us through and allow us to go through and set all the settings. Now, this isn't particularly complicated looking, but it's worth bearing in mind how you set this up can have an impact upon how your data is actually stored and referenced when you're creating and working with relationships. So let me just explain. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the actual name for this. So we're going to call this architect and projects. Now naming this again makes sense to put something in there that once you look at it, you know exactly what this is for. Now the next two options define the actual relationships in your database. So what we're going to do is we've got a parent and we've got a child. For my example, I want the parent to be the architect. 
So we come down and choose architect, which is our custom post type. And then we want our child to be the architectural project. Then we've got the option for the relation type. Now this is important and has a big knock on effect to how you can actually work with these relationships. We have three options to choose from. We have one to one, which basically means one architect can be linked to one architectural project. And that is it which in this example isn't necessarily what we want. We want to necessarily, we could say we want to have an architect could have worked on multiple projects, at which point you'd then choose one to many. So the parent would be the one and the many would be the child, the project. However, you could have multiple architects worked on multiple projects, which means you'd have a many to many relationship. Now, I hope that kind of makes sense because this is an important factor when you're dealing with your relationships. But don't worry, you can come in if you want to and change that at any point and then you can open up. So if you make a mistake at this point, don't worry, you can come back in here and change any of the factors you've got set up as part of this post relationship. For this example, we're going to keep this fairly simple. We're going to say one architect could have multiple architectural projects. So for this, we're going to choose one to many. The next thing you have are the meta boxes on the parent and the child page. This just basically means, do you want to allow the person creating both the architectural projects and the architect information inside your dashboard to be able to link those on either the architectural project or the architect? That's up to you how you want to do things. For this example, you could say you only wanted to have it on the parent page, so you could only link the projects they work on on the parent page. So let's just uncheck that. And that now means that we could only add in the architectural projects on the parent page. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. So we've set up the relationship. Let's just click add relation. And we've now created the basic for our relationship between our architect and the projects they may have worked on. So that's the first of that set set up. The next thing we need to do is start working with building out that relationship and displaying the information. To do that, we're going to start creating a custom template or a couple of custom templates to display this info. So to do that, we've got Elementor Pro installed. We're going to come over into the template section. We're going to come down to Theme Builder. Inside there, we're going to go through and create two different types of template. We're going to create single, which will show the individual architect and all their projects. And we're going to show the individual project. Also, we're going to create a archive for both the projects and the actual architects. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So first thing we're going to do is come into the archive. From there, we're going to say we want to create a new one. Archive is fine. And we're going to call this architect archive. And then we'll click on create template. Once that's gone through and loaded up, we can start creating the template. We're going to use our own starting point. We're going to start with a blank page. So we're going to click out of this. You can see that takes us into our page design. And what we need to do now is start creating that actual listing. Now, this is where we created the listings in the second stage of this video. They start to come into use. Let's scroll right the way down until we get to the listing grid underneath the listing elements. What we need to do is drag that in, drop that onto our page. And you can see it says, please select the listing to show. What we need to do now on the left hand side is come in there and there's all the listings that we have created. This is the architect archive. So we're going to say architect listing. Then we've got the number of columns and we can go through and start styling things. Now you can see it automatically pulls in the listing information of the two architects we currently have created using the layout that we set up inside that listing. I hope that makes sense. Now for this example, we're going to leave this as is. It's perfectly fine. You can see we can do things like up the number of columns based upon the type of display we're using, whether it's a desktop, a tablet or a mobile. We can see we can go through and control the number of post types, the message, if there's nothing to be found and so on and so forth. We're going to leave that as is for now. So we're just going to hit publish and then we're going to set the condition to display this. Click on add condition. It says all archives by default. We don't want that. Click to expand that out and you can see we now have a ton of different options. What we want to assign this to is the architect archive. So we we'll only use this layout, this template on the architect archive. Click save and close. And that's our first template created. We're going to jump back out of this now, go back to our dashboard. Once we're in there, we're going to come back over to Theme Builder. We're going to say we want to add a new one. So this time we're going to create another archive. But this one's going to be for the actual projects. So add new. We're going to give this a name. We're going to call this Project Archive. Create our template. 
Once we've done that, we're going to come over and we're going to close these templates down, these predefined templates, scroll down to the bottom of the page until we find that listing grid, drop that onto our template. And once we're in there, we're going to go through and choose what listing is associated. So expand that out and we want the architecture project listing. Click on there. That'll show us now the three projects we currently have set up. Again, we've got all the options on the left hand side. If you want to filter this, query it, the widget visibility and so on and so forth. Let's just leave that as is and then we can click on update and we can go through and set the condition. So what we need to do now is change this from being all archives and we want this to display the archive architectural project archive. That's a mouthful. So that's going to show us just the projects in their own archive. So we can say save and close and we are pretty much done with that. So the next thing we need to do before we create the single post page templates for both the architecture uh, listings and the actual architect themselves, we need to link and associate the architect with the project or projects they've worked on. So let's come out of our template setup, exit to our dashboard, and then we're going to come back up to our actual architect itself. So we're going to click on architect. There's our two architects. We're going to come into Dave Wilson and we're going to click to edit him. And you can see now we've got a related architectural project field on the right hand side. This has been created once we set that relationship up and it allows us to associate the two parent and the child elements together. So these two different post types can now be linked together. So you can come in and you can start typing in for the name of the project. So we just put mega for example. And that'll search through and you can see there's two projects. We can click on there and we do it again. We can now associate the second project. So you've now associated two projects with Dave. Let's go through and associate a different project now to Joe. Come back out to our architects. Come back into Joe this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to click and add a new entry in there for her. So for Joe, we're going to associate the Ornate Buildings project. Update on there. So now we've linked the two of those to their relevant projects. Okay, so we're now ready to create that single post listing for our architect and link those through to the project or projects that they've worked on. So what we're going to do, we're back into the theme builder of Elemental. We're going to click on single and we're going to come in to add new. Single is fine. What we're going to do is we're going to come in and we want to set this to architect. And we're going to call this architect single. Create our template. And then we can pull in the information that we want. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about making this all look pretty. I just want to demonstrate how it all works. Let's click to close that down. We don't want to work with that template. What we are going to do is we can either use the single post elements, the widgets on the left hand side and pull in data, or we could use the dynamic widgets at the bottom that are part of Jet Engine. Doesn't really matter which one you want to use. It's entirely up to you. However, if you do have fields that may be empty, I would say the dynamic field is the better option. But like I say, entirely up to you. So let's just say dynamic image, we'll drop that in there. Post thumbnail is perfectly fine. Image size, we'll just set that. We'll create a second column. So we'll add a new column in there. And what we'll do is we'll just scoot that over a little bit. And then we're going to come in and we're going to say we're going to put the post content into there. You can see that pulls in the relevant post content. Come back out. We'll say we want the post title. So it's going to be the name of Joe, for example. So we can go through and set all the different things we want up on there. If we want to add in custom fields and things, we can do that. So it's very easy to do. So let's come down, choose our dynamic field, drop that in there. And we can do, we can say we want this to be metadata. And we're going to call this architect telephone, like we did with the actual listing earlier on. So there's architect telephone. So that'll pull their telephone number in. If we want to, like I say, we can put hide value of empty and so on and so forth. So you can go through and do all those things. I've shown you the basics there. That's more than enough to be able to sort of flesh this out and do what you want with it. The most important part is how do we now link Joe to the project or project she's worked on? Okay, this is the cool part. What we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to come back out of this. We're going to scroll right the way down until we get to that listing option again. So we're going to drag and drop that in there. Now, because we've already set the templates out for both the individual architect and their projects, we can use those again and then we can filter those in this specific instance. That's the beauty of this. We don't have to create another listing. What we're going to do come over, choose listing, and we're going to say architectural project listing. And you'll see that will now just pull in all of the projects we have on our site. So as you can see, all those projects of which Joe is only related to one of them. What we're going to do is correct that. Can I come into post query? And you can see we can now go through and set up some query parameters. If we click add new, 
we've got a range of different types of parameters we can use. Now, before we take a look at using some of these for things like orders and offset, however, this time we want post parameters. We're going to click on there and that opens up a ton of new options. But what the hell do we do with this? OK, so this is where it's not the easiest thing in the world when you try to look through the documentation or watch the videos that are done by Zemes on how to do this. There's one key important piece of information that really is hidden away right at the bottom and not highlighted in how important this actually is to the overall thing. So let me just show you that and then I'll show you how we use it. So we take a look at the Jet Engine documentation. There's a lot of information on there and not the easiest thing to work your way through. But what we want are two separate pieces of information. We want this, which is massively important, and so is this. What these allow you to do is set up the filters, the parameters, the queries, whatever you want to call them, that allow us to either show the child related to the parent or the parent related to the children. You'll see what I mean in a moment. We want this first one, which is the short code that just says related children from and then post type slug. Again, what the hell does that even mean? It's very easy. Let me just show you. Let's start off by jumping back to our custom post type list. These are where we created our custom posts. We've got project, architect, property, which was I was created before. We're interested in these, the project and the architect, because those are the slugs that we need to use. Let me just show you how this works. Let's come back over into our template. We've got everything set up and we now need to go into include, exclude and so on and so forth. And inside the include post by IDs, we're going to click in there and I'm going to copy and paste in just that little bit of code. So there we go. And now you can see we filtered that out. Why? Because the slug of project is in there. So we're saying the child from project. In other words, pull in all the child options that relate to this particular person in this example from the custom post type of project. Does that make sense? I hope it does. It's one of those things that it can be damn confusing when you're trying to get your head around it to start off with. But once it clicks, it really is pretty straightforward. So you can see now that our template, by putting that in there, Joe is going to show all the data about Joe in this particular template. And it's going to show the projects that are associated with her. Now, let me just show you, just to show you that this is all working the way we expect it. So let's come into the settings, come to our preview settings, and you can see Joe is the one we're using as our preview for this template. Let's just change that now to Dave. So there's Dave Wilson. Let that refresh by clicking apply and preview. That will refresh the data on our page. Give it a second or two, and you can see now there's Dave. And there's the two projects that are associated specifically with Dave. So that's a great way of testing to make sure that you've got that query set up and configured perfectly. We've now created that single post template, associated it with the particular architect, and also linked through through the use of that database relationship to the project or projects that that particular architect worked on. So now let's just hit publish architect and all you can see is pulled that in that's perfectly fine but if you wanted to double check you can see you've got architect architect by author and so on so that's all fine we'll hit save and close we've now created that relevant setup for us next thing we will do is take a look at creating the single post for the actual project and then we're going to reverse link that to the architect so let's take a look at how we do that let's just jump back out of this exit to our dashboard come back into our theme builder come into single and we're going to say add new and we're going to come into this and we're going to say this is going to be architectural project and we're going to say project single create our template now i'm going to speed this up i'm just going to quickly create the basic information for this template then i'll show you how we do that reverse link where we show the actual parent information Okay, so there's our project template set up for the single project. We're going to do the same thing again now, which is scroll right the way down and find that listing entry. Drop the listing grid underneath. And once we're in there, we can now go through and put in what we want. Now, obviously, if you wanted to create a different type of listing grid for this, you could do. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. We're going to keep this simple just to show you how the relationship works. So to come in, we're going to say architect listing. 
click on there and you'll see that will just pull in the two architects that we have information on. So that's all we have. However, we just need to go through and do that post query again. So let's come in post query, add our item parameters or post parameters, and then we can put in the relevant piece of information here. So this time we need the second option, which is the related to parents option. So you can see related parents from post type slug again. So it's using the very similar kind of thing, but the first one is the children. This is the parent of this particular post type. So we're going to copy that over, jump back over into, take a look at our custom listing post types. And again, you can see there's our slug for project architect. We know exactly what the slug is going to be and what we need to use to search against. Come back over. We're going to drop in the short code there. And as you can see, I just replaced it now with architect and you can see what this is doing is this is pulling in the parent architect in this example dave wilson into the template for the project single so let's just publish this again architectural project all yep that's all looking good we'll hit save and close and we've now created our listings we've created the templates for all those different things we've created the relationship and we've related all the different projects through to the architect and the architect through to the projects so to take a quick look at that on the front end of the site now like i say this isn't style this is just basic but it should show you the power of how you can use these inside jet engine to really create more interesting more versatile and more feature rich websites so I've gone ahead and just added those relevant sections into the menu structure, jumped over to the front end of the site. You can see we now have architects and projects as new entries in our navigation. We click on architects. That'll show us all the architects we have listed using that listing setup that we set up earlier on. So you can see all the details there. If we want to click on a particular architect, we can click and go and take a look at the sort of information about them and the projects. Same goes if we go to projects, you can see that'll show us all the different architectural projects we've created and the relevant data associated with those. So let's just come back, click on Architects, click on Joe, for example. That'll load in Joe's information, and you can see there's the project she worked on. If we click on the ornate buildings, it'll take us through to the actual information about it. And we scroll down, you can see there's the architect associated with that project. We come into Projects, and we just click on Super Mega Tower, for example, and click on there. You can see that pulls up the data about the Super Mega Tower, the map, and so on, and the actual architect himself. If we click on Dave's information, you can see it shows us now the actual projects that he worked on. And that's how you create these relationships using Jet Engine. Hopefully what this video has demonstrated is, while it is quite daunting to start off with, once you get used to it, the process is pretty simple and also incredibly repetitive. But you can utilize a lot of the information you set up in various different ways throughout your templates. Now, I have to say up until yesterday, I struggled quite a lot with actually getting my head around how this whole process worked because the documentation and also the video that's up online is really not that helpful. In all honesty, it shows you a pretty much a different way to do this, which didn't, in my example, my case, didn't work. Now, that could have been down to my own incompetence for dealing with this, but I'd like to think that I work with relational databases long enough to know the fundamentals of how they work. So I have to say a big, big thank you to AJ Toker, one of the members on the Facebook group for Crocker block he posted up a little video yesterday in reply to someone else that kind of walked you through the basics and just opened my eyes to the right way of doing it and hence the reason why i put this video together because i think the documentation and so on that's out there is misleading it doesn't really help you that much and hopefully this will be a video that really does open people's eyes to how you can actually do this and to show you the process from start to finish through everything you need to do to get this working alongside elemental pro and the templates and so on that go with it Anyway, that's enough of me waffling. What do you think of this video? Could you see yourself using this technique in your projects? If, if so, has this video helped? I'd love to get your feedback in that comment section below. Let me know if you could see yourself using this, if you found this video useful, if you'd like to see anything else covered regarding the sort of the relationships inside Jet Engine and Elementor Pro. Let me know in that comment section below. Love to get your feedback on this and get any comments, questions going in there as well. Speaking of comments and questions, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't give it a thumbs down, that's perfectly fine. But let me know in the comment section why you did or didn't like the video. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. And my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.